with a massive breakthrough in me. I don't I have no way to even begin to explain it yet, but I have like I've broken through to some like different things where I've just seen a different world or many different worlds or like possibilities, options, lots of different possibilities and options. And that's what's I think important, especially with, with helping anybody, with helping our veterans, with helping anybody with mental health issues, helping anybody that feels stuck. You know what I mean? It's like when when you feel stuck in any way, so that's where I think a lot of anxiety comes from and a lot of things where you feel like you don't have options. And that's what I think is really nice about psychedelics is the expanse of just like, oh, shit, infinite possibilities. I don't really know how to get there, but it's just seeing that they exist because sometimes you don't feel like you have any choice. Welcome to the Worth the Fight podcast, where we bring you powerful conversations surrounding the sensible and therapeutic use of psychedelics and plant medicines towards healing trauma. I'll introduce you to guests who, through their own personal journey and transformation, tell the Worth the Fight story. I'm your host, Matt Simpson, author of Worth the Fight, Acting for a Better World, a guide to spirituality, psychedelic medicines, and overcoming trauma. Thank you for listening. Hello. Here we are, Worth the Fight podcast number 33. Our next guest is an extra special guest here. I'd been waiting for many years to have this opportunity, and um, it's a dream come true to have uh, Zach Carruthers. He is a uh, bassist and one of the front men for the band Portugal the Man, truly a, a rock star that is... Um, you know, had a rock star performance with this interview. Um, great guy, oozes humility, authenticity, raw, real, sharing openly and vulnerably about his personal experiences with psychedelic medicines. These guys, their music is is um, my go-to music whenever I'm looking to amp up my energy. And um, you know, they won a Grammy in 2018. Uh, that song, uh, "Feel It Still." And um, they have a soft heart for uh, those that don't have a voice. And we're going to be talking a lot about that in our um, podcast episode, podcast conversation. They are not just rockers. They are, are all about activism and giving a voice to the marginalized. And um, yeah, it's really, really inspiring to see people that on paper, would we would say that they have it all, but to see that they're giving back and um, and how they're they're leveraging their massive platform to push forward these vital conversations around uh, mental health. And uh, like we say time and time again in the interview, if we're going to solve these problems, we got to start having these conversations. And uh, I'm just just really impressed with with Zach. It was it was a great honor to have this experience. And um, you know, I hope that you all enjoyed our conversation as much as we enjoyed having it. Uh, it's a great honor. It's an incredible honor to share uh, my conversation with Zach Carruthers, the bassist and front man for the band Portugal the Man. Thank you so much for listening. I'm here with Zach Carruthers. Zach, what is going on with the COVID-19 fear virus? Dude, I do not know uh, everything. These are strange days indeed. It's very interesting. I mean, honestly, we're dealing with this pretty well as far as it. I'm I'm definitely scared for the health of everybody mentally as well, just because it seems like there's so much, so many things coming from this. And, you know, with questions about the economy, just a general instability and no kind of structure is, is terrifying for a lot of people. I feel bond and privileged because I do, I am seeing the bright side in this. As far as us, you know, we're in a band, we've, we've traveled for most of our life. I haven't, we are taking advantage of this time as just, I haven't spent this much time at home since I was a teenager. Mm. So I get, you know, with my family. And so we're definitely trying to use this as an opportunity, like we do everything, but I do understand like the privilege that comes with that. Like, how it is not easy. And it's, it's definitely scary for everyone. We have no idea what kind of world we're going back into. We're in the middle of recording an album right now. And right before this, we kind of, every time 
we record, we've been working on it for about a year, year and a half. And then right when we're done, we always kind of throw away all the lyrics and we just rewrite everything the last minute to kind of make it, I feel that, you know, art and music or the stuff that we do at least needs to kind of represent the times. And then all this happened and we have no idea what to write about now. It's crazy. Like we don't know what kind of world we're going into. Will will anything be the same as it was? Or you know, are we ever going to go back on tour properly? Because, you know, as things start to reopen and everything like who can afford to, to do things, you know, even if, you know, they just say, you know, the vaccine, everything's cool. And I was like, all right, everybody go back to it. People are very cautious. It's not like we're going to, people are going to sell tickets like they used to, you know, it's going to be quarter capacities. There's a whole bunch of different rules and which some of it is very good for safety and for uh, the spreading of, of germs. And this could just be the beginning of, you know, a lot of other things, but the fact is that we don't know. But I do think that uh, there's something kind of interesting in that. And I do feel in this time of um, divisiveness and everybody, you know, choosing sides and arguing with each other, having a common enemy is sadly a unifying thing. You know, everybody's scared. Nobody's safe from this. You know, like we were talking about with, you know, war veterans is kind of the same. It's like this, you know, it's uh, nobody is technically safe from it every like people are definitely in better positions than others but if if you're exposed it doesn't matter and that's kind of a something that can bring us together and we can find light in that mm, beautifully said uh wonderful to hear that you know y'all are, are are handling this as a as a sacred pause and a time to you know reconnect with family and and uh and to have all this this extra time and and uh, it'll be um, it'll be amazing to to hear what y'all come up with with your next album, meeting the times where the times are at. And uh, I love that you know that sharing of of your creative process. And uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be fascinating if you know the, the you know audiences are cut to a a quarter you know for safety measures. And uh, you know almost yeah. envisioning this this new world is it's going to be challenging you know. Um, but it's it's. Totally something that that idea of whoa this is a super special time and, and i love to hear that and i'm not surprised at all to hear that that sentiment uh from y'all and i know that that you know being a a rock star and and i've you know i've, I've read and and been been um you know really really diving into your you guys' story uh for the last couple of weeks as i was uh researching this call and 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 to just know the resilience of uh, pushing forward for as long as y'all did before your big break, um, and and um, and I'm sure that that resiliency that you cultivated along the way will be helpful uh, in these uncertain times. Absolutely, absolutely. It's like, um, it, thank you. And um, yeah, but yeah, one of these things is like in all the scary shit that's going on. When you do think that we are, we have the ability to kind of create a new society as far as things are going and we i don't know of any time or place in history where that's been such a collective consciousness that that we are deciding you know when we that's going to be really interesting when things as things start to reopen as things become safe to go gather collectively we get to not we can throw away shit that wasn't working for us in the past and when it comes to equality, racism, just the way we treat others, the way we handle business, the way we handle affairs and how we judge our life, you know. I've been stressed out over so many things. I know a lot of people that are just, you know, dealing with the rat race of life and this forced sabbatical in any way is doing a lot of terrible things. And I know it is extremely hard out there for a lot of people. And once it's going back, like I think we're gonna really it's kind of spring cleaning for your priority list, you know. Mm-hmm. When if everything was just lifted and everything was safe, what are you going to do at that time? What kind of world do you want to walk out your door into? Because we can make that and we can let a lot of bullshit go. And be like, you know I what? Love that. This is what matters. This is this is what matters. You know, maybe I don't need to spend all this time doing this. Like, what do you miss and what do you not miss? And what are the things that don't really matter? And I think we're going to all re-enter the world for better or worse, with much more intention and not just going through the motions. When people go back, you know, 
They're going to go see movies that they really want to go see. They're not going to be wasting time. They're going to call people that actually matter to them, not that they feel obligated to. The obligation is going to is going to run out and just, you know, what do you actually miss? What do you want to do with your life? And that doesn't mean work or a calling or any kind of success or family. It's just be real. What matters to you? And if we're all honest about that, I don't know if anybody like really ever has been. And so I'm just excited to see where the world goes. Mm, beautifully said. Yeah, I got a big, big smile on my face thinking about that, um, that invitation for, for people yeah. to go within and, and to find out what is important, uh, find out, take inventory of how we spend our time, how we spend our money, the relationships that we, we have. Yes. And what, what's really alive for me is the notion of, of a deeper connection potentially forthcoming uh, when we do that, when we're more intentional with our time yeah. and energy. Totally. Yeah, I, I fully agree. It's like, you know, if you can, I, I believe that we're getting another chance and it's, um, and it's terrible that, that something this heavy has to smack us in the face to realize that. But it's, it's like one of those things like, cause we have to assume, you know, what if things never really go back to the way we were. And so if we want to, choose it if you were if it was just like this let's say it's never going to end we can never go back to real life you think back on the last month that things were normal or whatever whatever normal is but then you're just like god i wish i had done this you know like you know when, when you lose somebody in your family it's like god i wish i had said something you know like nice or like how i really feel or get something off my chest get something up their chest and just like it's like if you know you only have so much time left well what if we just this kind of makes us realize that and like, Hey, there's a lot of shit that we're fighting about. That doesn't matter. There's a lot of things that, you know, we can do to make things better. And you, people have time to slow down and think about the world around them and like find, find happiness in the things that are here. You're always focused on, you know, the grass is always greener. You're always looking some over somebody else's, you know, backyard fence, but like when you have to just focus on everything that's around you, you can find beauty and joy and love and useful things that are just right here. And I think, uh, I, guess really nice. I think you, you learn to cherish the things that you have and learn that other people might not have those things. And maybe you can help, you know, make things spread, spread out the jam a little bit, you know, let's make things a little better for everybody. Mm. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Love that sentiment. Um, that's a that's a good segue into it's it's May. It's it's uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and yeah. uh, and and I want to give give a lot of love and and, and credit and and um, to to you and your and your band uh, Portugal the Man. Uh, years years back, uh, it was really meaningful that y'all you know took notice of the veteran collective suicide challenge that we have right now mm -hmm. uh, you know our war veterans are dropping yeah. to you know 22 per day that like that number is likely far greater uh we have so many that are stuck in self-abuse with the opioid crisis and mess uh you know stuck in addiction and uh, i think that our you know homeless uh, population is is uh i believe 10 to 15 percent veteran and for y'all to to see the value in um, you know alternative therapies like ayahuasca therapy for our war veterans as a, as a means to integrate them back into society and uh, yeah I was really really impressed and, and have been impressed uh, you guys uh, w won my heart with that and uh, I love your music uh, you know it's it's a, it's a go-to jam for me whenever I'm looking to amp up the energy and um, but I'd love to talk about uh, you know our, our collective mental health struggles. What do you think yeah, is definitely. is uh, what do you think is at root um, for for our struggles for the uh, you know not just our war veterans uh, amid a mental health crisis and suicide epidemic, but our uh, you know our collective where where one in four of us are on psych meds. Depression rates are soaring. I believe there's yeah. there's eighteen or 19 million of us that, that struggle with anxiety disorders. 8% uh, of our population has PTSD at any given time. You know, addiction yeah. rates are, are through the roof. What do you think is at root for our uh, collective mental health dismay? Yeah, you know, I, am, I am not sure. And um, I think it's different for everybody. But I do think that not talking about it doesn't do, doesn't do shit. I'm, uh, you know, I am not a smart man, but I do 
um, I think that a lot of the, the stigma being lifted off of it is hugely important and not being afraid to talk about things or honestly just it's I think something that really helps is just creating space for everybody to kind of do what they feel they need. You know, I grew up in Alaska where, you know, shit, dude, you didn't go to therapy. Like you don't go to a doctor unless you got a bone sticking out of your leg. You know, that's, that's the kind of stuff that we grew up with, but dude, I'm not well, I'm on, I'm on medication. I see it. I haven't seen a therapist. Well, I'll probably get back to that, but I've been kind of, but I've been doing a lot of things focusing on that and and I've been, you know, on my own mental health journey uh, for the last like year or so because I realized I was I was not well and I was just crazy amount of anxiety generalized, like some of it makes sense, some of it just does not. But the fact is that that you can talk about it and and that things in life are generally moving to that way to to open things up. And to just say that it's okay to be vulnerable. And I don't know when it started or when it's happened, but every little inch, and I don't know what the root of a lot of this is, but I know part of the solution is just getting things out in the open. I mean, take like The Sopranos, for instance. That's an amazing movie where it's like about a mobster going to therapy and or a series about, you know, uh, guy in the, a mob boss going to therapy and that, like the amazing thing that I think that just did for mental health right there. I'm like, I'm rewatching the Sopranos and now just with a different eye being a little older, I'm, I'm just seeing this. I'm like, this is amazing for the world. This is, this is fantastic. And granted it's a show about like killing people and taking advantage of stuff too, but it's like, it's also really beautiful about how everybody, everybody has needs. And you got to listen to yourself. And that's the hardest shit to do for me personally. I felt like I did not know myself for a long time. And I was just caught up in what I thought or what other people like projected on me or that like reflections bouncing back. But you got to listen to yourself. And that's hard as hell to do, but it's uh, hugely important. What do you think? Mm, uh, but first, I want to want to honor your beautiful share. Uh, I think you're spot on the vulnerability, and, and I never thought of Tony Soprano, and I never uh, on this conscious path. But yeah, you, you you make a great point. You know that they would, and almost like they Trojan horsed a a message of vulnerability of mental health and meeting oh. our times where the times are at, and and it was a it was a show that gripped us all back in the day and sucked us in. And, uh, you know, giving us that, that perspective of, of the most esteemed gangster, you know, uh, taking that time yeah. to get in touch with, with, with his feelings. And, um, you know, and I talk about this about every fourth or fifth time or, or, or show here on the Worth Fight podcast, but Brene Brown's work comes to mind. You know, she, oh, yeah. she is she's spearheaded great. this and, and she's uh, infected our culture in the most incredible way with this vulnerable strength notion her ted yeah. talk is a top five i think it's got last checked you know 50 million uh views and it just really makes us rethink that story you know you'd mentioned about oh. uh, growing up in alaska and and um and, and maybe it's different there i'd imagine it is um but uh, you know what you were saying really resonated with me in terms of yeah we don't we don't talk feelings. We don't, we don't, we just don't share. And that's, uh, we're breaking down those walls and now people can, it, it, you can't solve a problem that you're not talking about. And then like, that's like common sense. Yeah. And uh, so, that, so oh. the fact that there's, um, you know, and I think that this, this vulnerability, this, this broader vulnerability um, movement is paving way for this psychedelic Renaissance that um, yeah. is, is coming, you know, our, the medicine is on the way. MDMA assisted psychotherapies in phase three clinical trials with our federal government. It's been really? labeled a, 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 and fast tracked a breakthrough therapy by the FDA. 
Uh, psilocybin assisted therapies also been fast tracked as a breakthrough therapy. Our most esteemed institutions, uh, Johns Hopkins is given a thumbs up to these medicines. Uh, NYU is doing the same, Imperial College of London, University of Madison, Wisconsin, all these prestigious universities, um, you know, all over the globe are studying these, these medicines right now and saying, hey, when, when people are hurting or struggling, with, with trauma, uh, especially our warriors and people of, uh, you know, victims of childhood uh, sexual abuse and, and rape, there's tremendous mm-hmm. benefits, potential benefits to those that, that want to be real and vulnerable about what's holding them back and, um, and, and to lean in to that trauma with these misunderstood medicines. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, I think that's awesome. Cause once again, that's just another stigma that like, you know, these these things are illegal and and that just takes you back to like why are they illegal why are uh, and, and i mean it makes you question everything and when you go back further and further and further there's like why is this a problem where where is it from it's like oh this drug like well it's uh basically is it is it racism <laughs> is it a lot of like oh this drug is you know the agriculture in this area is you know south america and maybe in the 1950s, the U.S. government was trying to, you know, destabilize governments by not allowing them their chief export. Like, all right, well, now that's illegal. You never know. You like, I don't, I don't know if that's actually true, but that's uh, that's just some shit that you think about. You just think about why, of all the tools that are out there, and there's there's a there's just there's a dark side of the moon to everything. There's the other side of the coin, and where, no, yeah. Po- poisonous mushrooms, they can be poisonous, but in small doses, they can be medicine. And everything can be a poison because literally everything can kill you. You know, too much sunshine can burn you. There's like, there's, I think it's more about balance and finding the appropriate amounts of things, of tools for you. And it's, it's never going to be, it's so hard to kind of regulate something and to put, you know, FDA approvals on things. And because every person is just so different. And I think I just don't want to be, I don't want people to give up. I want to keep people looking for ways to make their life. I don't even want to say better, but just more of what they need. And if you're honest about what you need, and sometimes you don't know, and that's where I think that psychedelics can really help because they do open up your mind to make you see things that you did not see before. And not in a way that, uh, you know, I'm not really talking about hallucinating or anything like that. It's just, it peels back the layer of the onion, man. And Mm. it shows you things that you might not have realized before. Mm, Powerful, powerful insight. Have you had uh, experiences? Are you in in the band? Oh, yeah. um, have had, you know, psychedelic healing or, or have, I always read between the lines. And, and I think that so many of the mm-hmm. artists that are moving our world are using these creative tools to heal, to get right, to be fit for serving humanity. And, and I think that uh, your music does just that. It's a, it's a service to humanity. And, um, you know, that, that uh, yeah, so much of, of the, the, the love and joy that I feel in my heart has come from you know, art and music from bands like Portugal The Man. And, uh, you know, I, I wonder with us being in a, pro, a time of prohibition, if, you know, where these things are still, they're still illegal. You know, we were, we're working on some yeah. of the de- decrim efforts. Uh, we had had a major wins uh, in Denver this last year where they decriminalized uh, yeah. psilocybin. We had a big win in Oakland where they, they flat out decriminalized all plants. And so, so people can you know, engage these without worrying about the law enforcement coming to knock on their door while they're in the middle of a big trip, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they can well, go and it just goes back to things like, yeah. And, and like jails and just being flooded with people that don't necessarily need to be there. That just, I mean, don't even get me started on the prison system, but that shit's messed up. And after things like, like weed become legal and mushrooms, it's like how many people are in jail? Like we're in jail for so long because of, an offense for weed and it's just like ridiculous absolutely ridiculous and how much worse did that make everything instead of just 
yeah, kind of letting things be. That, that's um, one of the that's one of the uncomfortable you know, questions that we're leaning into with this, this movement, you know, if, you know, medical marijuana is, is legal in 38 states. And uh, I would think at some point it's going to be uh, federally uh, legal as well. And if mm-hmm. these, you know, psychedelic therapies will, will be deemed medicine at some point, then like who's in our jails uh, that, that brings up a really yeah. like who the, who the fuck's in our jails. If these, the, these are, exactly. uh, these are medicines, then we, we have a prison system that is mostly full of African Americans and Mexicans that are in on nonviolent crimes. I don't know what the stat is. I need to get that stat, but I think it, it's, it's, it's a, an alarming statistic that, that, uh, the, the majority of our jails, the, the folks that are in there, are in there because they were seeking these medicines to get right because of the trauma that they have, the generational trauma that they have. And um, mm-hmm. it's, it's really a shame when you think about that. Yeah, it's, it's so messed up to see that and how, how many times, just like, yeah, I can't even imagine the numbers, but then suddenly some laws start getting passed and then like wealthy white dudes invest. And then now like, you know, the weed, you know, the, the weed business is, is popping and that's so messed up. So not just not equitable, not, uh, and just ridiculous. And it forces, it just forces the hand of people that, that, that to be turned into a negative direction as far as like the rest of the of society is concerned. And when you really stop and think about everything, it's like, what is bad? what is good? What are the differences between that? Does that even exist? It's, it's fucking ridiculous. And they net, they need to let a lot of people out of jail. And now in a situation like this, bringing it back to COVID, how many people are going to be in close quarters and die and spread disease because of shit like that too is unbelievable. It's just a, it's just a downward spiral. Once again, I don't know how to exactly to stop it, but I know that, I'm a firm believer that acknowledging there's a problem and talking about it is the first step towards change. The first step to revolution is being open to change, you know, and talking about things. Beautifully said. Yes, there's no easy answers here. And and yeah, that uh, that idea that now you know, there's, there's folks that are getting in in the, the, the uh, cannabis movement and, and to make all this money, uh, and that brings up the big, big dilemma, like, like, should there be reparations for the people that are in jail and so on, um, or, or not necessarily reparations, but how do we make that right with them? Uh, as, yeah. as we're, and we're it's bringing- so hard to work backwards. And that's one thing, Ooh, that's like a good, that I've never really thought about. So like working backwards is so hard trying to dig yourself out of a hole. is so much harder than just not jumping in it in the first place. And that's what I've been trying to do. I just kind of realizing this, but yeah, like, like really being thoughtful about every move that you make and everything that's happening around you. So you don't have to go back. Cause yeah, honestly, yeah. How do we make that right? And with so many things that have gone wrong in our history and how do you make things right? There's some times where it can be an apology and that definitely works. And other times it's gone way too far for an apology. And I don't know what to do. But acknowledging that an apology needs to be had, that something needs to come, and then you're like, where do we get reparations from? What does it cost? What like it's so hard to monetize and materialize any of that because it's a life. Absolutely. And speaking of, you know, veterans and stuff, like the biggest sacrifice, like what do you truly have to give once you've given everything else? And it's like it's to your life. And how do we give that back to somebody? It's pretty hard. Mm, mm, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I appreciate the the uh, you know your willingness and your band's willingness to broach these uh, these charged waters. Uh, I know, in addition to our you know y'all having a soft heart for our war veterans, uh, you have a, a soft heart for the indigenous peoples that have been really fucked oh, over too. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I was doing a little recon last night and 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 watching that podcast with you and your your trainer Jeff. And, um, you know, that notion that you and your band, you know, whenever you're traveling to 
from city to city, you know, throughout the U.S. and throughout the world, you're giving an opportunity for indigenous peoples to, to, to say their piece or share their music. And I just think that that's really honorable, really admirable that, that, that y'all see the value uh, in that and, and giving them a platform. Your, I mean, you guys have an awesome, huge platform. And to share that is really, again, very admirable. It's amazing. I mean, honestly, it's like, it's totally cool. We made so many friends and we are learning so much. And it's got to meet the most amazing people. And it's something that we were trying to do forever. Just from growing up in Alaska, we were very, you know, very tight. The Native Alaskan community was, just, it's just always, it's so, it's so very present. It's a smaller place. It's a, um, you really see, you see the people, you see the culture and the impact that it has. And you see the problems a lot of times too, but it's not, it's not just about that too. It's just they like, um, the knowledge and the connection with the land and there's something just like very amazing about it i think it's just like truly missing from the world and but yeah in, in general a lot of times we have to talk about the bad and, and that stuff they the fact that you know somebody are making decisions about a people without them having a seat at the table is just not okay with us and but yeah, we started doing this and it's really great. Yeah, we do land acknowledgements everywhere we go. And it's like a, it's a really cool learning experience that we share between us and the crowd. It's not speaking for anybody. It's, we just, we're just doing, you know, just basic manners. We just recognize that, that uh, you know, they have been taking care of the land that we are on for as long as anybody can know. And so when we, when we play a show, we just ask representatives of the area uh, the tribes of the area that come up and we just pass the mic and um and then we get to learn with the crowd and i think that's very important it also takes speaking of the vulnerability it just takes a lot of the pretension away from activism which i think is huge i don't like the fact that you know we, we work really hard for this we donate a lot of money we donate a lot of our time we've started a nonprofit foundation but like I wouldn't say I'm a good person. I'm a decent, I'm a decent guy, but he's plenty of good and evil, you know? And I want to take the pretension out of that. A lot of times when it comes to advocacy or sharing knowledge, there's like a, there's like a teacher and pupil thing that I don't think is necessarily right or fair. And it kind of, it may throw people off by saying, you know, I'm more, more woke than now, or like, I know more than you, or because of that, I do this. And that's not what it's about at all to me. And I want it to be, okay with being vulnerable and say that you don't need to be a super good person. You don't need to like have a ton of resources, just like whatever gift that you have and everybody has one, share it and, and listen to people and do that. And we're no different than the people in the crowd. And that's why I like that when people come up and they start talking, it's like, we're just there with the crowd man. we're just fans. And we get to, we get to all learn about the land that we're on at that moment and celebrate it. And I think I hopefully everybody walks away with just something, but a question with a little more knowledge and a little a question of something like, hey, maybe I'm going to research this land, the people of it, or take care of it. They're less likely to, you know, when they finish a beer can, maybe they're going to, you know, recycle it instead of throwing it on the ground. You know, every little bit helps. And if a lot of us do a little bit, big things can happen. It doesn't have to be one person, you know, donating a million dollars. It's just tiny little ripples of change can become like, Big fucking way, it's man. Love it, love it. Music to my ears. Everything you're saying, uh, really, really um, honorable, admirable. The um, notion of lifelong learners, you know, and and uh, and to yeah. be in a situation where you know, not claiming to have the last words. Y'all are major artists, major rock stars, you Grammy award winners, but, but still maintaining that humility to say, Hey, you know what, let's have our feet on the ground and be grounded and, and hear what these, um, uh, you know, the, the indigenous uh, and the, the caretakers of the land have to say, and, and let's give them a platform to share. And, um, and that notion of, us all doing a little bit and, and just sharing what we can, uh, I, I, I think is, exactly. is, and it doesn't take much. We don't all have to go out and, and engage, you know, social projects that have a mission for global peace, but it's like, just do you, do, do, do what you can. Yeah, it, totally. It, it, like this, it's, it's, you know, literally what we're doing right now, you know, we, we go on podcasts and stuff to have conversations and to share those because, 
you know, you and me, we're equally, we're learning from each other. You know, nobody's just, unfortunately, I don't, I don't think there's too many Buddhas out there and uh, too many gurus that people would just sit there and, and listen to. There's not a whole, there's a lacking of leaders that can just go off. And, and I don't think it should be that way. Like nobody has the answers, man. And so that's how we, that's how we got to talk and figure things out is by having conversation. And it's always mutual. It's always every conversation, whether it be, you know, a grandfather and his granddaughter, you know, one is learning something from them and the other is learning something from the other. It's a, it's a cycle and it's all about the connection and the relationship between two things. That's where energy is measured. I think it's like, like you, I was talking about like reading in between the lines. Like that's where, that's where the shit happens. That's where things go down. And no, I think it's hugely important. Most definitely is. And I think that, um, that y'all being uh, pioneers in a sense, uh, not just with your music, but with choosing to embrace activism and, and embrace the potential that you have to positively impact your circle of influence, your massive circle of influence. And I think that this, uh, you know, coming on to a podcast to talk about psychedelic medicines and culture and approach some of these taboos is a subtle yeah. little invitation to all the other artists that, I mean, we're all in this together. And um, so totally. I, I, I thank you for taking that, that onus and responsibility and, and, and um, handling it in a sacred manner. And because I definitely feel the sincerity and I'm just, uh, again, wowed and, and proud of that gesture and what that means for others. I don't want to get too far off track on the indigenous peoples. There was uh, something that I that, you know, I'd been doing a lot of research the last last few weeks, and and come across some really troubling statistics. Our um, indigenous peoples are three times more likely to have PTSD than those of um, the normal community, uh, right on par with our war veterans. That uh, you know that. That was an interesting stat. I didn't know it was that high. And another troubling aspect, and we are going to get to a lot of solutions later on in the in the call here. I think that we're we're given you know kind of uh, I don't want to get doom and gloom to to everybody. There is going to be hopefully more more uh, solutions as we're we're just identifying the problem right now. But the idea that uh, the medicine, the peyote, yeah. which is a, is a big part of the Native American uh, healing process to deal with that PTSD, you know, is in question. It's uh, the status is vulnerable right now. And, and uh, you know, as we're decriminalizing some of these medicines, it's creating a, a market for uh, Joe Schmoes to go out and, and get high, uh, which is, which is great. They can use these as therapeutic tools, but when they're, they're taking the potentially the medicines of those that need them I could see some, some conflict there. That's yeah. a, a conflict that I've been waking up to these last, last few weeks and, and something that, um, you know, might be a conversation that, that is, is worth having. Totally. Yeah. I feel that. And yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, the, the paradox of, that you think about it. like when you dig in too deep on anything you start you know you start thinking about how anything that you do can affect somebody else on the other side of the world or anything anything like that and like seeing the cause and effect of so many things but i think that's and it, it'll drive you crazy man it really will but i mean that's good like i think it's wise to think about those things and think about the effects and and use that. And, and it's all about, it's, it's about trimming down. It's like the Occam's razor is like getting down to the point of anything. And it's not, you know, when, when you're using anything, because everything is a tool, you know, to eat or give you what you need or give you a feeling. And, and, you know, feelings just seem, they're kind of our unconscious. And I think if we listen to them, like feelings eventually become knowledge. You just get something, you know, it's just nature in us when any kind of feeling comes in, you're like, why is that feeling there? And anytime you do something, whether you're using a drug or a food or anything, you're like, why am I, why am I doing this? And what whole, what void is it filling? Is it, you know, and people do it with food, they do it with alcohol, they do it with drugs, they do a lot of things. And, 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 and it can become, there's use and there's overuse and there's abuse and there's so many different things. And I'm trying to like, I don't know where I'm going. There's a new thought. I'm kind of just rattling you know, off the cuff, but 
acknowledging why you do things or why you use things can really solve a problem. If you know, you can cut out a lot of bullshit by realizing, by getting down to why you do things. And a lot of reasons that we do anything where we eat, we drink, we do drugs, we, you know, have sex, we do things. A lot of times you just want to change a feeling. That's what I think most of it is for me, at least whenever I do anything, it's like, I want to change the feeling that I'm feeling right now, whether it's hunger or sadness or happiness or tiredness or whatever. It's like, I just want to change the feeling. If you dig into that deeper, you can probably find other ways or healthier ways or ways that don't affect other people as much, but they can just list out some options mm. and options are never bad. Never bad. Never bad. What's alive for me is, is, and what you're saying is feel it still and feel it, feel that emotion, feel that lean in. Yeah, and, totally. and, uh, yeah. and the, I'm not surprised with how grounded and uh, humble and, uh, and how zeroed in you are on intentionality. That's what's really alive for me is, and that is such an important aspect of this movement. Uh, if we're going to engage these medicines that have Dionysian power, we got to be gosh darn uh, yeah. intentional about how we're using them yeah, totally. and, and, for sure. and make sure that we're, you know, that because it brings up so much energy and, and we're pointing that and having, and I think a big part of we're changing the story around these uh, psychedelic medicines, the to a more sane, updated story that factors in modern science and uh, modern psychology and, um, and all these different factors that, that are being driven by the exponential technologies that are driving our culture right now. So it's, it's a really exciting sure. time. And, um, you know, again, your, your insight and, and support of the, the indigenous folks is really, really impressive. This was something that really jumped out at me last night is that a big part of this, this movement is, is that we're getting back, we're, we're reconnecting with nature, we're reconnecting with our truth, we're reconnecting yeah. with the lands. And, you know, our native people, they, they never disconnected. And uh, I thought yeah. that that was really fascinating to hear that, that notion is they've maintained their wisdom traditions, even though uh, we've been on a war path to strip their culture of said wisdom traditions with putting them in boarding yeah. schools and, and uh, you know, reservations and whatnot. And um, yeah, I thought that that was really, really interested. That that idea that these medicines they do they they connect us to to what's real and what's true, and um, our indigenous folks they maintain that. Yeah, exactly. It's like some of the some of the old thing. I mean, there's there's I think that there's just a natural give and take, a natural balance that I think, like I was saying earlier, like everybody has something to offer somebody else. And I don't, you know, I, I, I don't know where I feel like they're keeping things completely traditional or then moving things super far into the future. I, I think it's a balance. And I think, I think the power struggle is what fucks up so much of it. And the something, something or someone, any person or, or system trying to overpower another it's the domination thing that bothers me. And, and that's the thing that just makes that throws shit out, out of balance instead of, you know, meeting a new culture and sharing between it and trading and honest trading. And, and it, I feel like when it comes to negotiations and things, it's like somehow it's been revered in like business ways like get your way or overpower somebody dominate somebody and get your way which i think is just fucking stupid in so many ways when it comes to business as well depending on what you're selling but if we have negotiations where you're arguing over the phone you're like ah, oh, that doesn't work for me that doesn't work it's like i want to get off the phone and have both people hang up thinking that they got a pretty good deal because that is a relationship and that's a connection when it comes to business when it comes to land deals when it comes to any kind of trade why can't things be mutually beneficial why does somebody have to get fucked over i don't understand that and i just i don't see why there can't be like a, a square deal and just uh all right angles you know and just be like you know all the angles are right 
shit square. And, you know, I, I just don't see how that got so fucked up and just has been for so long. And it's, you know, at the bottom of it, probably just greed, just having more of whatever than you need land, title, power, knowledge. Yeah. Stockpile and shit. Yeah. Yeah. And that greed, I believe, is a manifestation of unhealed trauma. And uh, we're, we yeah. are we are surrounding that greed and we are surrounding that trauma. And it's my hope and prayer that we can flush that trauma out into the open right now with what's going on in the world. And, and with this yeah. sacred pause that we've been talking about is that we can have these honest conversations because we all got the bandwidth. Jeez, we all, I think that, you know, we have an yeah. extra three to four hours a day uh, that we're not spending socializing, <laughs> commuting, uh, you know, doing all these things that we, totally. were, we were doing before. So, you know, maybe we have the bandwidth now to sit with some of these uncomfortable notions that don't have clear answers so we can start potentially solving some of these uh, during this sacred pause. The Worth the Fight Service Project, book, podcast, and coaching is all about retelling the story around psychedelic medicines, trauma, and what our United States war veterans mean to our great nation and human family during these uncertain times. In this podcast episode, we highlight the Heroic Hearts Project, a 501c3 doing incredible work for our warriors amid a mental health crisis and suicide epidemic led by Jesse Gold, a former Army Ranger, fully in touch with the sacred duty and responsibility that our warriors have to lead not only for our warriors amid a mental health crisis and suicide epidemic, but also the American people that struggle way too much with emotional and behavioral challenges. Jesse is a really good guy with a servant's heart. Please help him help our United States war veterans heal with medicines that work medicines that cut right through the bullshit and go right to the root of the trauma so our warriors can heal get right they can let go of that trauma enjoy the freedoms and ultimately so they can enjoy the freedoms that they bravely fought for the heroic hearts project is all about building community resilience in these uncertain times when our warriors heal they show us courage and honor they give us a subtle invitation to heal and get right to grab a shovel find service projects to engage, to pitch in, to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. It's so inspiring the work that's being done at the Heroic Hearts Project. To donate or get involved, please check out the heroicheartsproject.org. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the rest of the episode. I just saw an inspiring post yesterday from Kelly Brogan. She's a, a luminary that is, um, I, I love her edgy spirit and the way that she looks at these medicines. And, um, you know, she had, she had said something to the fact of stop imagining the apocalypse, start imagining the, the revolution. And, um, and I would change oh, that really? to, to start imagining the love revolution. It's time that we yeah. love better and a deeper level, take an honest inventory of where we're missing the, the mark and, and shit, let's just, let's just do better. And, and we have this yeah, time. Okay. We have this time. And, uh, you know, I've been beating this love revolution drum for the last, last three years, presenting a, what I believe to be an exponential solution to our human family, that we have our war veterans amid a mental health crisis and suicide epidemic, our war veterans that know honor, they know discipline, they know courage. In a time where our leadership is struggling to even play nice, uh, our war veterans, they are all trained in leadership and they know discipline. They just need medicines that work. And, um, and the yeah. idea that they are you know, we talked about this on the pre-call and, and I've really been waking up to this notion the last few, few weeks, few months is that the exponential value is, Hey, they're in all of our communities. They're black, they're white, yeah. they're Mexican, they're Asian, they're, they're male, they're female, they're rich, they're poor, they're us. And they fought yeah. in these wars uh, and, they, and they go serve our country and then they come back and we're, we're too busy to acknowledge this collective plight. 
And um, yeah. I, and from what we've seen with this this work, I've been uh, championing this cause with the Heroic Hearts Project, uh, led by Jesse Gould, who's an Army Ranger, uh, who's got a an amazing 501c3 non for profit that is organizing ayahuasca retreats for our warriors that have treatment resistant PTSD. Oh, rad. This is rad, and, and the Worth the Fight podcast that was Worth the Fight podcast guest number three, um, but Worth the Fight podcast guest number sixteen. We had Marcus and Amber Capone on the show, where our U.S. Navy SEALs and Special Forces uh, retired, of course, came out of the psychedelic closet. Our most uh, uh, elite warriors on Earth are engaging. Uh, largely iboga is a uh, or ibogaine. It's a powerful root from West Africa that has been um, that is helping them with addiction. Their their community struggles big time with with addiction, and um, oh, interesting. And there was something that that Amber had said that was really powerful. Is is that um, this this notion that uh, our warriors that are healing with these medicines, they're waking up to the reality that it's you know that their Im- most important mission is yet to come. It's their most important mission is forthcoming. And that is safely and responsibly integrating these psychedelic medicines into our culture, showing the way, showing how it's done, being vulnerable, raising their hand, sharing their truth, talking about, yeah, interesting. talking about what's going on in the Middle East and so on. If we're ever yeah. going to solve the, any of these, these challenges. Yeah. No, that's, that's amazing. That's so interesting to think about. And, and man, it's such a, it's the fact like how screwed over so many of the veterans get, especially when, I mean, when it comes down to it, when they're sent to like, there's always a difference. Like I was recently just like watching some movies on, on Vietnam and stuff. And just like how shitty for those people, like people being sent over and wanting to do a good thing and going over and, but they don't necessarily might not know what's going on or reasons that they're that they're they're fighting for and losing family members losing friends and the terrible shit they go over there and deal with only to come back to have the entire like so much of society not helping them and booing the war and not being not being like not being um sympathetic to to the actual to the people that were doing that and it's like and then that's how so many things like with uh, with homelessness or just being not helped it's like it's so it's like the most fucked up thing ever it's just like so wrong on every every level and and yeah that's i i I can't imagine man that whole that whole thing must have just been unbelievably scarring i can't imagine yeah yeah and that and in that scarring you know i see and I think I think that we can see the opportunity there is is um, this has been a central part of the worth the fight uh, messaging this mission of hope and healing is that degree to which one knows the darkness that knows trauma mm-hmm. is the same degree to which someone can stand and love and share their light and um, you know our warriors they've been through uh, you know our U.S. veterans have been through a real life hell and um, that idea that. Again, they, they know that darkness, so therefore they can know the light at a much greater, higher capacity than the average Joe Schmo who's doing a healing because they have lessons that we couldn't, we couldn't even dream up uh, what their lessons are that they're healing from. And if they heal and can get right, that is an invitation to us all to pucker up our chin and to lean in. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, um, yeah, totally. Right on that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the notion of community resilience is really alive. Like they're, uh, totally. when they heal, when they get right, they're in the community to uh, help reinforce, especially in these challenging times where we don't know what the future holds and shit has gotten real. Totally. You know, people are going to be losing loved ones, losing their lives. The economic uh, yep. aspect is that you know, for me is something I'm keeping an eye on. Like, geez, really, this, yeah. is, this is going to be, this is just going to wreck people. And we do live in a capitalistic oh, totally. society and, and we need money to, to, to buy food and, and, uh, you know, to pay our rent and that leading with our warriors could be that exponential potential solution to let them show us the way, let them lead us into this unknown that, that is scary, but you know, that, that, that they are us, 
and they can show us the way and they can lead with integrity and strength and courage. And I think that's what we need if we're going to build yeah. community resilience that we need to, to weather these trying times. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, clearly brave people. And, and that's like, you know, those are, those are the people that's like kind of the, the things that we want to instill. And that's, once again, like going, like finding the connection and the common ground. Cause, uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, especially here, you know, when it comes to like, they get, they get lost in all the other things about it. And they'll say, you know, like talking about helping veterans, like, of course they want to help the veterans, but then they'll like go on about, about the war and the reasons for the war. And you got to understand like, that's, those are different things. And the people that, the people that fight a good war and fight a bad war, they're still the same soldiers. And that's not, that's not their call. And what we need is for each and every one of those people in our military to be strong, to be mentally well, and to take care of them at the beginning before going in as children, raising this whole community. When people, when there are conflicts anywhere in the world and we send representatives of our country somewhere to fight and to do things, I want the you know, people are, you know, those, those things are going to happen. And I want the smartest, bravest, most like healthy people that can, that can know, know themselves, know right or wrong. And that's going to change shit. And that's going to, that's going to just like, I don't know how to say it, but that's just, that's, that's the most important way to represent. And because that shit is very, very hard. And I don't even know where to begin thinking on that, but you want, you want the truth people, you want people to be healthy and to be real and to be compassionate and to be strong and courageous and brave. And that's what we should want from our entire society. That's what everybody should be, whether it's, whether it's going, you know, it's going into the army, whether it's going to college, whether it's going, you know, to take care of your grandma when you kid, when you're dropping out of school and at 14 to go get a job at the supermarket to take care of your family you want brave, strong, smart, courageous people in the entire country. And we need to take care of that. We need to start nurturing that, I think. Mm, beautifully said. Yes. The, uh, that most definitely, I mean, that's how we, we change the tides. That's how, you know, the children truly are our future. And, um, Absolutely. this brings up a troubling notion of, of something that is, um, unique to this work that I've been engaging or we've been engaging with our warriors is that Mm -hmm. um, there's been an insanely high disproportionate amount of our war veterans. It's not the arm that's missing. It's not the foot that was blown off in war. It's not losing a buddy in war Uh, time and time again. It's the childhood sexual trauma often from the church that appears to be driving them to war in the first place. Sebastian Younger is a foremost thought leader in PTSD, homecoming and belonging. He wrote this book called Tribe that is the, again, the seminal text around PTSD and our, our veterans plight. And there's some troubling research that he has in his book is that the modern day veterans that fought in Iraq and Afghanistan are two times more likely to have reported childhood sexual trauma than those that fought really? in um, Vietnam at random. And mind you, I said report. We all know that, you know, especially men, people don't want to talk about this shit because it's, 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 it, there's a lot of totally, shame in the yeah. culture. And, and um, so this notion it's that, fair, yeah. that, yeah, that what we've seen is that so many of, uh, of our warriors that are, are healing with these medicines, you know, it's bringing up the root trauma is hey you know that the, there was sexual abuse there was there was church abuse that and i believe that you know and most people aren't in the business of, of pointing fingers at institutions but i do i i, I believe in my heart of oh, hearts yeah, that, yeah. that the catholic church is at root for a disproportionate amount of the war and conflict we see here on earth that unchecked child yeah. sex abuse which affects one in five of us is something that yeah. is driving ornery people to go fight in these wars. And, um, I know it's heavy, but I believe that to be truth. Yeah. No, I mean, that's definitely, I mean, the, the Catholic church, I mean, once again, like digging back and back and back and like, that's gotta be, 
you know, childhood traumas in general, like has got to be like at the root of most things. And it's so hard to peel back and realize what, what is actually there. And but yeah, no, the, the Catholic church, like clearly was an institution that harbored and like, it's just how things were set up. And it's so, and that's, that's a scary shit about systems is once you have a system is still built off people. And if you talk to individual people, I'm sure there's a lot of good people in that. I know a lot of you know good people that, that are Catholic and, but, but it's an course, institution yeah. that, that can make those things not, God, there's a word I'm looking for, but they just, they tolerate it. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. They, and I mean, just like the church in general, like how many wars have been because of that, because of beliefs and you can't, that's what's scary about beliefs is like, you can't, you can't fight that. You can't, it's, it's hard to change and it's, it's hard to, it's different. There's a difference of sharing. There's a difference of demanding. I mean, going back to a lot of, you know, the things that we do, um, just colonialism in general, has been sponsored by churches the when you look back on anything why we have any rules whatsoever you know it was popes and you know the doctrine of discovery is some bullshit if you take back any rule and go back to there's an insane book called pagans in the promised land the uh the doctrine of discovery by a man named steve newcomb who we've talked to a bunch he's an incredibly smart man but he he just kind of kept tracing every law back and back. And it just goes back to like some papal documents that just basically said the church is right. And they have, if they go onto any land and they just say that the, you know, this spot that I found is just like discovered in the name of God, pretty much like anything fucking goes and it's their rules. And it kind of crumbles the entire foundation of everything. This country was built off of a lot of just Western European the major colonial forces in the world and that's where it goes back to so yeah i got a problem with the catholic church okay i do <laughs> <laughs> love it love it um thank you for the 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 share and 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 uh you know the sharing that wisdom and that that, that insight and um yeah you know that that is if we're not going to solve if we're going to solve some of these, these challenges, you know, I think that the, the, like we've been talking about the whole time is the, is pushing forward these conversations. And, um, absolutely, absolutely. and again, I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, wowed and proud of, of the work that y'all do and your willingness to, to, uh, come on the podcast, to talk psychedelic medicine, to, to, talk, absolutely. to yeah. talk culture and to talk these charged taboos and bringing some light to them. And, um, you know, I'd love to hear, I want to be respectful of your time here, uh, but I'd love to hear, uh, you know, uh, personal stories perhaps from the band. We yeah. talked about this uh, on the pre-call, just the power of uh, stories is our most powerful weapon to destigmatize de these medicines. And, and um, you know, if any experiences that you want to share of, of overcoming or, or uh, leaning in, I, I know that you vulnerably uh, shared some of your, your honest, uh, real, real struggles that, that, that you've had this last uh, year with some anxiety yeah. and, and kind of leaning in yourself and, and practicing what, you, what, we, what we're preaching here, really. And I'd love to yeah. hear if there's anything more that, you, that is uh, top of mind or that's on your heart that you'd like to share. Well, in general, I think as far as personal stories, I, I agree with you. I think storytelling, you know, we're storytellers. I think that's just the sharing of knowledge and feelings and an experience. Cause that's the hard thing with finding. That's the hard thing with knowledge and language is that everything, every letter, every word, every musical note, everything is just, it's kind of a symbol of an experience. Only you can have an experience and then, and you can talk about it, but always gets watered down. Every time you remember it, you're not really remembering the thing. You're remembering the last time you thought about the thing. And I do think that's how psychedelics have helped me. Honestly, it's just like, that's why they call it a trip, man. It's a vacation without going anywhere. And it's something, it's some place to, to kind of open your mind and just see a different perspective. And that's what I find so huge about that. And sometimes you need just a little bit, you need a little bit of a bath for your brain. And 
the shifting of perspective. And I think that in general, when we're talking about this on this podcast, I'm very excited that all the information you shared about the um, them testing is starting to take away the stigma of psychedelics in use of medicine and therapy. I think that's hugely important because it's, it's a massive door that has barely been pushed open. And it is for anybody who has, has tried a psychedelic, you know that there's a lot behind that door. And I think it's so personal that, and that's why it's probably having so much problem being regulated because it is so personal. And no one can fully share their experience because it is an experience and language stops us from doing that. We're just sharing symbols about an experience that you cannot share. And so I think it's a good door to open. And I think we should take care of that and start working with that with our, with our veterans. And then on the other hand, I think we need to, so we like take care of the people that we have. And then as far as the future, just finding a way, if there was a way that you could just take care of, just as a society, if we just, every kid grew up, regardless of their household, but just as a society, whether it's, you know, projects or in a very fancy neighborhood, it just, every child felt like they were wanted in the world and in the school system and just in society, how much that would change things. And just growing up feeling a sense of belonging. I think a sense of belonging is where, a lot of things go wrong for a lot of people. That's where a lot of people turn to things for better or worse, for good and bad. That's how a lot of people might, you know, join join the military. It's how that's how I started skateboarding, getting into music. It's finding where you belong. And for some reason that's a that's something that drives us. Maybe we should just kind of listen to that a little more. I'm trying to run off on tangents. No, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. I'm loving this. Absolutely loving this, Zach. You know, I think your your observations are spot on. Again, uh, humility and intentionality is what uh, is really alive for me. And, and uh, you know, I think that that's the way that we disseminate this message to the culture is is by having a grounded, uh, grounded talk about uh, how these medicines have positively impacted our journeys. On, on my path, it was oh, wow. uh, ayahuasca and uh, psilocybin helped me to confront uh, the childhood sexual trauma that garbled up my nervous system that was really keeping me mm. from, from being the best version of myself. And, um, you know, I, I know that it's, it's, uh, there's immense privilege in my ability to raise my hand and to say, Hey, you know, and because of the, 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 yeah. the there, there's been no other way for me to do this, this public work with our war veterans than to do it out in the open. And, um, and, and for me to u- utilize that, that privilege and, um, to, to, uh, to share and, uh, you know, push these conversations out and if they resonate with people, great. And if they don't, you know, boohoo, yeah, that's cool. Totally. That's cool too. You know, uh, we're not proselytizing here. We're, we're just, we're just sharing. Exactly. And, um, exactly. Yeah. No, but that's, that's important. That's, that's awesome. And good for you for doing that. Good for talking about that. Good for like that plants a seed of, you know, like, vulnerability just being normal and being okay and and realizing like what you what you have and what you can do about it with with good and bad feelings and and learning to make the best of what you got and make and and make and making the world better with what you got too i think that's just like a, a very important key key thing to remember um yeah i just i just think that's super important man good on you thank you Thank you for, for the, those words. Uh, has there been a, um, a specific uh, psychedelic medicine that has um, affected you maybe more than uh, another or, or a, a specific experience? I haven't got to try a lot of them. To be honest, it's kind of weird for what I do for a living. And, and especially, I definitely do want to get with the, the more natural things. I would love to try, uh, you know, peyote and um, uh, ayahuasca and do that and it's like it's kind of on touchy also because like uh we like we work very closely with a lot of native communities and i've got some really cool opportunities that i haven't got to to get into that and it's 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 tough because i don't want to water down i want to like you know i don't want to appropriate in any way but i do i am so interested in just like the knowledge and the 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 healing properties of of sweats and plants and connecting with the land 
it's huge, right? Um, but honestly, yeah, I've, I've gone, I've gone out. I take mushrooms every now and then. Um, that's been probably the biggest helper. Like it's, it's one, it's one of the things I do purposefully. I guess it's like, like every now and then, once every like year or two, when things just start adding up, I'm just like, I kind of need a bath for my brain. I need to zoom out or zoom in. I just need to get extremely macro or extremely micro. And I can't fully explain the experiences, but it just shifts my perspective just enough to like relax and let, or I don't even know if it's relaxing. I mean, sometimes it's totally not relaxing at all, but it's just, it's something different that really opens up my eyes to another thing. And it makes me feel humility and it makes me just feel like there's so much more out there that I have no idea about. And it, it sparks my curiosity and everything good and bad and in people and an experience in science and art and religion. And that's one thing that I think is really good because I think the curiosity is just something that has always driven humanity and yeah. is just understanding, like it's just questioning things. And that's what's fun is figuring out an answer or as close to an answer as you can. And a lot of times I, it's frustrating because every time I learn something, I just realized there's more that I didn't know. That's how it always is. You can never fully understand, but I'm curious and I like listening to people and I like hearing about experience. I like hearing the symbols from experience. And, you know, when I do that, I feel myself kind of, I've, I've had several times, especially like recently, I've like on several different substances, but I, I kind of go into this different place. And it's so hard to explain and I'm kind of working it out and I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's like a massive breakthrough in me. I don't, I have no way to even begin to explain it yet, but I have like, I've broken through to some like different things where I've just seen a different world or many different worlds or like possibilities, options, lots of different possibilities and options. And that's what's, I think important, especially with, with helping anybody, with helping our veterans, with helping anybody with mental health issues, helping anybody that feels stuck. You know what I mean? It's like when, when you feel stuck in any way, so that's where I think a lot of anxiety comes from and a lot of things where you just feel like you don't have options. And that's what I think is really nice about psychedelics is the expanse of just like, Oh shit, infinite possibilities. I don't really know how to get there, but it's just seeing that they exist because sometimes you don't feel like you have any choice. And I don't know whether free will is real or not, but in this in the macro reality that we live in, kind of is, and you always have a choice. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Your your take and and your share and thank you for for sharing. Thank you for seeing the value in the psychedelic medicines and using your voice uh, and your platform to, to share and to raise your hand. And, and um, I'm so impressed with, uh, with your team. And uh, it's been wonderful to, to connect over the years with Rich and uh, with Logan and Ash. And uh, I'm so grateful for, for you and John and the rest of the gang, the rest of the, of the, of the band, and uh, for y'all seeing the value you know, healing the hearts and minds of our war veterans might mean for our troubled world. And uh, to not just uh, feel that, but to lean in and, and to do something about it and to raise your hand. Um, oh, so much yeah. gratitude and respect and love for y'all. And um, do you have any, any parting words of wisdom that, that, that you want to share? I know you've been dropping wisdom bombs the whole call, but uh, anything that you might want to <laughs> share to someone who's struggling with, with the uh, uncertain times? Um, not, not totally. I mean, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a dipshit. I think just, uh, I think listening to people and being intentional, I guess if I could share anything, like, especially cause I know that like these times they're, they're scary it's because we don't know what's coming and we don't know. Um, it's hard as shit to work. Um, same for us. Like nobody knows how the future is going to unfold, but take the things that you do have control over, which is yourself and how you project yourself and your soul onto the world. And 
you know, you can't necessarily control the external facts and what's going to be projected on you, but you can control what you project. And just think about that whenever you go out into the world. And I believe that that will come back to you. And um, if anything, you know, there's plenty of other things to worry about. But if you just make that little change and focus on that and think about that, then um, I think collectively this uh, things get a little brighter around here. Love it. Thank you for, for uh, that, that, that last share. And, um, you know, I, I want to put this out there that, that, that y'all have a lifetime invitation for the Worth the Fight podcast. As long as I'm, I'm uh, holding these conversations, you guys can, you can come on anytime to, uh, to, to, Dude, to, I love that. to push forward this. And, uh, you know, again, so much gratitude for, for you and your time and, and your team. And uh, thank you so much again. Dude, thank you. And uh, yeah, you you taught me a lot of stuff there. That's awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna read up on a bunch of things. So thank you so much, dude. Appreciate it. And and typically at this time, I would say where can people find you? Uh, but uh, and I'll I'll put your links in there. It's like where can people not find Portugal the Man? I think would be the more more proper. Uh, you know, with your music, <laughs> yeah. with your music we're, being everywhere. Yeah, we're yeah we're 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 around. Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, we're we're definitely around. For now, we're at home. Everybody, stay safe stay healthy out there. And, uh, we got this man. Love it. Thank you again. That was pretty cool for me on many different levels. Uh, such an honor to have that conversation with Zach Carruthers, uh, one of the front men and bassist for Portugal, the man, uh, my love and respect for these guys just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Uh, not only have they been rocking my playlist for many years now, they're rocking our world with bold activism, uh, showing others how serving humankind is done, as Rick Doblin has said, uh, story is one of the most powerful tools that we have to change the narrative around these psychedelic medicines. Uh, Zach's open, honest, candid sharing uh, will surely help many make sense of their own mental health challenges. Bravo, Zach. Thank you for coming on the podcast and sharing your truth. Uh, I wrote this book, Worth the Fight, because this message, these conversations have to be shared. I felt a moral duty and obligation to, to raise my hand and share my own uh, overcoming of PTSD, depression, anxiety, and addiction with these misunderstood medicines. Too many people are hurting. This is all about service. Uh, our warriors are dropping like flies to suicide. Uh, what kind of people sit on the sidelines when their warriors are struggling uh, amid a mental health crisis and suicide epidemic? And the most prestigious universities have green-lighted psychedelic medicines, uh, fast-tracked them uh, as, as breakthrough therapies. Uh, these medicines work. They're ancient uh, healing technologies. And um, let's rally. Let's rally for our warriors. Uh, let's do what's right and, and, and heal their hearts and let them show us the way uh, into the unknown. If you want to find out more about what we're up to, you can find the Worth the Fight book on Kindle, on Amazon, paperback. I also recorded an audiobook, which you can find on Audible as well. Uh, in the last few episodes, we have massively upgraded our Worth the Fight podcast show notes, thanks to Mark Pelzer, who has jumped on board and is helping uh, push forward these, these vital conversations and uh, the Worth the Fight brand. So if there's any errors or corrections, you'll find those in the show notes. He's also taking note of really citing everything that I'm saying uh, or everything that we're saying uh, with our podcast guests. And it's a great addition if you're looking to dive deeper on any of these topics. Mark's doing a wonderful job, and he's here to call bullshit on me if I make any mistakes with, you know, as we're pushing out towards the edges, there's conflicting information here and there. So this will be a great addition. Lastly, we have a few events at the Madison Psychedelic Society. I will be presenting the Worth the Fight book and podcast, this uh, mission and message of hope and healing to the Madison Psychedelic Society on May 28th from 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time. I will also be hosting a um, Worth the Fight book club with Day H.J. She was uh, a Worth the Fight podcast guest number 31 on uh, June 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. Central Time. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for the support and uh, so much love for you. Peace. This has been Matt Simpson of the Worth the Fight podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more about our mission of hope and healing at worththefightbook.org. Please rate, review, and share this episode. Please help us expand our circle of influence and get these vital conversations out to our human family. Also, if you are in a financial position to support the show, 
you can help us push forward these conversations with monthly donations on Patreon. This podcast is a tremendous amount of work for me, and I have stellar guests in the queue. Please help if you can. Thank you for listening to this programming. Much love, y'all. Peace.